In this video, I'm going to show you how I export a character from Photoshop into Unity and then apply a basic walk and run animation like the one you can see on screen here. So here we have our very basic character created in Photoshop. Now to make this into a usable sprite sheet for Unity, we need to make sure that each element of this character is, is on its own layer. So for example, I have a layer for the eye front. Oh, that's the body. But we've got the front eye, the leg, the back leg, the back eye. So we can we can lay these out nice and neatly, remove the background so it's transparent, and then we can crop this file to help save on some file space like so. And here we have our sprite sheet that we're going to use in Unity. So we're going to go to File, Export as Quick PNG, and then I'm going to go to the location of my Unity project. I'm going to go Maths Folder, 2D, and then Player, and I'm just going to name this Red Player. When we press Save, that should export into our Unity project. As we can see, it is here. And now we're ready to begin setting this up for a simple animations for running and walking. So at the moment, our sprite sheet is just a single image. We need to split this up into multiple different assets that we can use to recreate our player character. So to do this, we're going to select our red player sprite. And then in the inspector, we're going to change the sprite mode from single to multiple. Now, when we apply this, we can go into the Sprite Editor and we will be given this window. Now, what we want to do is we want to slice this image into one, two, three, four. We could do five, but the eye is actually a duplicate that we could really not really we don't really need. So to do this, we're going to go type automatic center. I'm going to press slice. As we can see, Unity is automatically sliced our sprite sheet into the different elements of our character and we can click these and we can rename these as such we can change this from red player to red player body that is not how you spell body there we go we can change this to red player i we can actually delete that one as we don't need a separate image for that red player leg back red player leg front with that done we can press apply close down this window and now we can see over here we have a sprite for the body the eye the leg front and the leg back which is exactly what we need. So now we're going to go into our Unity Inspector. We're going to create an empty object. I'm going to set this to zero. I'm going to name this player. And this is what we're going to use to pulse our player sprites. So to start with, let's drag the body under here. We can see it's a little large. So what we're going to do is we're going to change down the pixels per unit to that makes it bigger, so we want to go the other way. So let's say 150. That's still a bit too big, so we'll go 200. Still a bit too big, so we'll go 250. Uh, we've got about 400. Let's make this a bit small. There we go. So now that we have our player body set up into in our scene, what we're going to do is we're going to drag in an eye for the front. We're going to position this where we want it to be. We don't want it to be a child of the body. We want an eye for the back. We want that there. But as we can see, this back eye is currently in front of the body sprites, which is not what we want. So we're going to mess around with the layer orders here. So we're going to set our body to 1. Actually, we're going to set our body to 2. We're going to set the front eye to three so it's in front of it and i'm going to send the back eye to one so it stays behind and then we can move these into the position we want and then we can do the same with the back leg and the front leg so our back leg can go over here let's say it's sprite to one 
And then the front leg can be here. I'm going to set this to three. And we want to make sure that these are on the uh, same Y position. So I'm going to set to 125, like so. And there you can see that we actually have our character recreated inside of Unity. So we're going to reposition them here and then we're going to set these up to actually work in our scene. So to do this, we're going to add a rigid body 2D and a box collider 2D. We're going to edit this collider so it fits the character that we have created. I'm going to mainly fit it around the body to the bottom of the feet. And we're actually going to go a bit past the feet just to give it a little bit of leeway so the, uh, the thick lines actually touch the floor. And now if we hit play, this should fall and hit my, my floor in the scene that I already had set up. So there we go, we can see that the player has hit the floor. It's all nice and clean, looks like they're touching the floor. And in the scene, the floor is just a sprite with a box collider. Apparently I have two backgrounds. We don't need that one, some post-processing and whatnot. It's just a basic 2D scene with uh, URP enabled. So now we're ready to begin actually animating this character. So over here I have an animator window and an animation window, but these won't be here by default. So I'm going to close these down and show you where to find them. We go to window at the top, then we go to animation, and then we grab the animation window. I'm just going to dock it here. And we go back to window, animation, animate tour. And now when we select our player, we can create a new animation clip. I'm going to store this in the right folder. I'm going to call this player idle. So this is going to be our idle animation while we're stationary and providing no input. So now what we can do is we can press this red record icon. Now while this is pressed, any change we make to the transform or any of the components on or a child of this object, we will start animate and we'll create a keyframe for them is what we'll do and then we create a bunch of keyframes we actually built up our animation so to begin with i am going to select our body and i'm going to go on the position i'm going to add a key here so we have our default body position and i'm going to go over to about 30 like half a second and then we're going to move this body down so now we can see we have a little bit of a bob animation. And then to round this off, we can copy our original position, put it the same length by, and we've got a little looping bobbing animation. And we can do this with other parts of our character too. So we can grab the two eyes and we can do the same. So if we go to about halfway, we bob these really far down we actually get a warning because both of these eyes have the same name. So it doesn't know where to actually animate them. So if we undo that, oh, we seem to lost our back eyes. So we bring them back here. We need to make sure we name these properly. So we'll name these front and eye back. So now when we animate them, we can grab them both and pull them down. And because they don't share the same name, we don't get that same issue. And then we can copy the original placements and then paste them there. And as you can see, we've got a very basic bobbing idle animation. And if we go to our animator window, there should be... There we go. If we click on our player, then go to an animator window, we can see the states of our char character and their animation. So to begin with, we have our entry point, which goes straight into player idle, which is what we want. So if we press save, we can press play. And our character will just be bobbing in idle by default. And if we go out of the maximize game view 
click on our player, we can see that this animation is just constantly looping. And it's looping because if we go to our animation file, we have loop time ticked. If we was to disable this, the player would actually not uh, loop the animation, but because we've already started play, it believes it should. So if we were to leave play mode and then enter it, the animation will only actually play once. And that would be it. But that's not what we want. We want our idle to be uh, animating. So now we're going to go to our player again, and we're going to click this drop down. I'm going to create a new clip. Now this clip is going to be our run animation. So I'm going to call this player run. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to hit the record button. And then we're going to move our pieces of our character to form our run animation. So I'm actually going to go to about 15 frames in. And I'm going to grab the front leg. And we're going to slide this back. Then at about 30, I'm going to bring it forwards. So our character currently slides the leg back and forwards, which isn't exactly what we want. When it's sliding back forwards, I'm going to go about halfway in. I'm going to raise it up. And that should hopefully create like a little step animation and then we're going to do the exact same for the back leg but in reverse so we're going to go to our back leg we're going to go to about 15 frames we're going to slide this forwards but about halfway here so about seven or eight i'm going to bring this up as if the player is stepping they're going to hit the floor we're going to copy this leg position i'm going to drag it all the way back so now we've got this look like the, the legs are actually running and causing steps to actually move the character forward. And to further build this animation up, we're going to go to our body. And when we have a step, we're actually going to move the body up. And then when we hit the floor, we're going to move it down. And we're going to copy these. each step there we go so now it looks like the body is also bobbing and then finally we're going to do the same with the eyes so when the body goes up we want our eyes to go up when the body goes down we want our eyes to be back in their default position so i'm going to copy and paste those and then at the end they'll have the default position and then during this step, we want them to be at the same height as the original step. So now we've got this little bobbing animation, which is really, really cute. And is our little player that's going to be our run animation. So our next step is to go to our animator and set this up so we can transition between the player idle and the player run. So to do this, we're going to select player idle. We're going to make a transition. Select player run, make a transition, and go back to player idle. So now at the moment, uh, as soon as the player idle animation is finished, it will, it will trigger player run. When the player run animation is finished, it will trigger player idle. But that's not what we want to do. We want it to be based off player input. So we're going to go to the parameters tab, and we're going to create a new ball. I'm going to call this is running and we're going to use this ball to determine if the player should be running or idling so if we click the transition and we untick has exit time and then under conditions you can see actually the transition needs at least one condition or exit time to be valid otherwise it will be ignored because at the moment there is no way for us to transition from the player idle to the player run so we're going to add to the conditions and it's going to auto fill in is running because it's the only one we have and when it's true we will transition so when is running is true we'll transition from player idle to player run and we're going to do the exact opposite to stop running so is running i'm going to set to false 
So when the player is no longer running, we will be playing the idle animation. So if I set this to play focused, hit the play button. You can see we have our idle animation. If we go to player, we can see that the blue bar is showing the progress of our animation. If we tick the is running box, we transition to running. And then when we untick this, we go back to our idle animation, which is perfect. So now the next step is to actually hook up the idle and run animations into code so we can trigger the animations based on key presses. So I already have a player movement script that I've created off screen as this uh, video is basically on how to animate and set up an animated character for Unity. But we have used the new input system to get our key presses. I do have a video about this on my channel, so there'll be a link in the description to that if you want to see how to set up uh, input using Unity. But for now, we're just going to open our player movement script and I'll just go over it very briefly. So to start with, we have a float. That's our move speed. It's how fast we'll move. We have a reference to our input script. We've got a reference to our rigid body. We have a movement vector, so this will store the value of the key presses to determine which direction the user should move, and a reference to the animator that's on our player. In our awake method, we just grab the references to all these, so input, we create a new game input, a rigid body, we get the component, the animator, we get the component. Then in on enable, we basically enable the new input system and then we subscribe to the movement performed and movement cancelled events. And in on disable, we disable the input system and we unsubscribe to the movement performed and movement cancelled events. Then we have our fixed update method and because we're using rigid bodies and physics to move our character, we want to make sure that we place these in a fixed update instead of a regular update as it helps the uh, physics engine do its calculations correctly and more reliably. And then what we do is set the velocity to the current movement vector multiplied by our player's speed. And then we have our move performed function. So what we do is we get a move vector which is reading the value of vector 2 from our player input we set it to if it's greater than if the x is greater than 0 we flip the scale to make sure it's a vector 1 else we will flip it to a minus 1 1 and 1 this will make the character face left and right based on our input and then all we do is we go to our animator and we click set pull we put in the name of the ball we created earlier, which is, is running, and we set it to true. And then in the move cancelled, we just make sure the movement vector is set to zero. And then we do the same thing. We set the ball is running to false. So if we drag this onto our player object, we go player movement, we got our move speed. We can we can leave this focused so we can see the transitions in our animator window. So when I press on my D key, the character moves to the right. Press the A key, the character moves to the left. And then when we let go, we go into our idle animation, which is exactly what we want. We can see these transitions happening inside of the animator. So as soon as I start pressing the key, is running becomes true and we transition. When we let go, is running becomes false. So I'll go over very briefly the input uh, settings that I have to make the code easier to understand. So we have our action map, which is our player, our action, which is move, and then our keyboard input. So W, A, S, and D. But we can see here that our composite type is a 2D vector and the mode is digital normalized. So this is how we read the value in our code. So because the value type is a vector 2, we get the input and we're reading a vector 2. So when we're pressing A, the vector 2 is minus 1, 1, uh, minus 1, 0. When we press D, it is, it is 1, 0, which determines if the character is going to move left or right. And then based on this, we actually set the scale of the X to flip. So if I go to my player, we can see that our scale is 111. If I press the D key, A key, sorry, A key to move a left, 
it will flip to minus one. And this means we don't have to create separate sprites or animations for moving left or moving right because we're just flipping the x value of our player character and making it less work for ourselves as it's all done in these little bits of code. And then we have just our animator set ball is running true and is running false to determine if we should be running or walking. And that's it. That's how you set up very, very basic animations inside of Unity for like 2D characters. We can add multiple animations and we can transition from run to jump and idle to jump. Going forward, if we wanted to build off of this, we could create a death animation where all the same uh, aspects of what we just did for the idle to run, you would do for other animations and you would build this character up to actually be much more fun to play around with inside of your little games. So yeah, if you found this video helpful, uh, leave a like, uh, leave a comment in down below. It really helps my channel. It's really awesome seeing some of the feedback I've got from some of you. But yeah, that's it. If you have any suggestions for videos you'd like me to do in the future, as I say, leave them in a comment and I'll see you in the next one.